Hi, it's Dane. I'm back. Uh, Jonah Custom Guitars. Uh, I haven't, uh, well, I'm building one guitar right now, but uh, doing lots of repairs. This is um, the Gibson. Uh, just posted in the last video. The CL30 Deluxe. So I pulled out the five frets. You can see across there. And I've put a couple in already, and so I'm just going to back up a little bit and show the process. Pretty much once the fret is out, um, take a little hook and uh, put it in the groove and pull it across and look for snags. This is a snag that's deep, deeper than I need to worry about because I've already run my other little piece through. So anyway, that's the, the process basically. I don't pull all the way through on either side. I wouldn't pull all the way out this side because I catch, you know, a piece of grain here and rip it up the side of the, the board or the same thing going that way. So basically, start from either side and, uh, and pull toward the center. Pull toward the center. If you catch something, you kind of jack it out of there like that. Um, also, in the process, uh, if you can't get the thing through there smoothly, I have a Ten thousandths razor. So these these grooves are about twenty thousandths, kind of a snug twenty, and uh, so you can just run a little razor saw right in the groove. Got to catch some things there. Uh, having done that and still not having a good clean groove, I'll go back to the regular fret saw. Um, I meant to order. Uh, I just did a stew mac order, and this always happens. There's something I'm thinking about, and then I forget it. But uh, I actually got some separation knives coming for pulling uh, uh, bridges and, and uh, the extension, fretboard extensions loose. Got a little heat blanket from LMI for the, for the bridge and I'm going to use it on the extension as well. Um, I've been doing it in cruder ways and I thought it was time to step up my game a bit and get the actual heating blanket. Um, so, I've got a 1950 Martin coming up, I've got to pull the neck off of and reset the bridge on it, and uh, so pulling the bridge off and doing the, uh, the neck reset. Wanted to have a little cleaner heat source than what I've been using, which has been a combination of just a hot knife or a hot iron, steam iron. Um, the guitars I've been working on haven't been anything but practice really and they've, they, you know, decent decent enough guitars but not guitars that I would want to take a chance on, or excuse me, guitars that I would take a chance on rather than uh, a Martin. So, um, ran, ran this through, you have to be a little more careful because you got a full width blade, so you know, pulling it through the slot, taking a chance on it, skipping out of there and digging a nice gash for you. Then the other thing I do to make sure there's actually room down there is a little trick uh, I think I got from Dan Earlywine. And that's just taking a piece of fret wire, you know, cutting a notch in the tang and bending it and filing the barbs off so you can actually put the wire, let's move over here one you can see, put the wire down in the groove and, you know, pull it through the groove to make sure that you don't have any interference with the depth of your fret tang. And so I did that on these five slots everything is going to go in just fine. So I went ahead and just banged. Uh, a lot of times I'll use a press but for just five uh, and uh, I'll pre-cut and all that kind of stuff if I'm doing a full neck and especially if I have uh, binding I have to notch over the binding and then file the tang back that sort of thing. Uh, but just hammer it around. see you don't even need a fancy fret hammer just a little lightweight claw hammer I'm going to be uh, tacking the ends in so uh, they're they're holding pretty good though you know when you've got this much leverage on the end of a piece of wire it's not moving at the board it's just moving down here so but I will still uh, clamp a, a radius block on there and tack the ends of these frets with uh, Thin, you know, number 10 super glue. 
and uh, then I'll file them back, angle them, bevel them up to match the, the existing, see the existing bevel on these frets, if I can get past her. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'll match this bevel on the new frets, I'll flush them. Anyway, bang in another foot. And I pre-bent these. I over-bent them a little bit so that the ends aren't, uh, you know, the, the center of the fret doesn't high center on the middle of the fretboard and you have loose ends. Um,